Warm greetings from California, says Guitar Fix, yeah. Greetings from Portugal. Thank you for being here. Let me just move to my left. How are you? Can everyone listen to me? Hear me perfect? Let me just check the comments. What's up, Sid? Guilherme, um abraço. John Plum. Pablo Ramirez, desde México, un saludo para México. Andrea Joy, how are you? <laughs> Great. So we're here de Lisboa, Guilherme, muito bem. So we're here to, this is my second YouTube live. Uh, I'm still getting used to it. Germany, Andrea, Germany. Great. Uh, I, as I told you, I, pick, I picked up this hour because I think it's a, a good hour for the entire world. For our friends over the Americas, this is kind of okay. For our friends in Europe, this is late night, but uh, <laughs> due to the situation of the COVID, 
it's okay, <laughs> nonetheless. Um, I'll be looking down because I have my my iPad here where I can see the comments and just for me to answer your comments. So in this episode, let me check my notes. I have 10 tips for you to get new tones or different tones just out of your guitar without spending any money. So no mods, no electronic changes, just using what you have. Okay, let me go through my list. So the first tip I want to give you, and probably it's so obvious that you might even not have not even have thought about it. It's pickup combination. So that's why I really love a strat style guitar. Holiday in Germany tomorrow, no problem. Uh, it's holiday in Portugal today and tomorrow. <laughs> so two holidays in a row. Well, for for the guitar, a simple, simple, simple thing, and that's really wh why I love Strat configuration, is that having three pickups, you can easily have five different tones just out of your switch. So not moving nothing at all, no pedals, no nothing, just a switch gives you five different tones. And this is just so great. I, I really love the Strat combi combination because of this that I'm going to explain. So usually I have, I set my pickups height. Let me just try to show you. Can you see it? So the bridge pickup is way higher then the the neck pickup it goes kind of like this because the neck pickup has way more information than the bridge pickup due to the harmonic content over here on the string so it's fatter it's already bigger sounding than the bridge pickup by nature in my guitar pickups are specific for each position so i have lindy frailing blue special so the bridge pickup is hotter than the neck and then the middle, which makes it a little compensated. But yet, I still like to have my bridge pickup as a boost. So if I have general clean tone here, on my neck, I like to move to the bridge and have a little more crank. So if I have a drive, it's even more perceivable. So I like to have it set this way because this gives me a boost, a solo boost immediately. And I like to use, in the clean tones, I like to use the in-between positions, the four and two, or the two and four, whatever you want to call it. So when you use either of each pickups, they tend to be more mid-rangey, so with a little more pick attack. Let me just adjust this light here. I'm sorry, but it is too bright for me, and I think for you too. <laughs> okay, better. Yeah. So, <clears throat> whenever I, whenever we play each pickup, and this is the same for every guitar, for a Tele guitar, for a Les Paul, it's the same. Whenever you combine pickups, you lose mid-range, you lose peak attack. The sound gets smoother, gets thinner in a way, so gets scooped. You lose the transient of the note, you get a little more roundness. So it's great for little wing. a glassier tone it's great for the funky stuff If I 
have a loop like this and I want to get a very percussive tone, I can get the middle or the bridge or the neck to give me more attack and to play like a single loop. Basically what I'm saying is that I use the in-between for rhythm and the single pickups for lines. So if I want to cut through the mix, if I want to have more punch without changing any pedals, I immediately have the... Instead of... So this is softer to me, the in-between. and. Robert Cray, for example, only uses the two in between positions, so neck and middle or middle and bridge. Which is the Sultans of Swing position. Uh, it's it's the strat sound. It's the African music sound. Okay, I like it a lot, I use it a lot. Mostly I use the, the neck and middle, sometimes I use the bridge and middle. Bridge is my solo, my bigger sounding, my cut through the mix, my rock and roll sound if I want to get a... Of course, I turned on the overdrive, but it doesn't sound the same if I use the neck. Okay, so this is my rock and roll tone, but usually when I double guitars, and do you guys know what uh, doubling guitars is? Or what, what does it mean? Let me just check the comments. Buddha question what if you what if you had the neck and bridge pickups together why isn't that an option in the strat it is on my necks I just press this button down and I have neck and bridge <laughs> it's an option so it's the same thing you all you will lose mid-range okay Overdubbing guitars or doubling guitars means when we are recording in the studio, it's the only way that is possible, unless you play live and you have two guitar players. But when you are in the studio and you record a part, a rock and roll part, a riff, something, uh, and you record your guitar twice, and usually when you double guitars, you pan one to the left, one to the right, extreme left, extreme right. You get a huge wall of sound. All the bands, all the rock and roll bands like ACDC uh, used it. Of course, the metal bands, it's mandatory. Sometimes they even triple guitar. So they do one left, one right, one center. James Atfield is very well known for, do, for doing that. In metal, it's very common. But in rock and roll, it's super, super common. <laughs> so whenever I overdub guitars, if I do it with the same guitar, which I usually don't, I usually pick another guitar, preferably another amp, another set of pedals, another everything to make it sound the most different as possible, because the most different the guitar tones are in the left and in the right, the bigger it sounds, okay? But if I do record something like this, like, uh, let me just play a riff. <laughs> do something like this I usually double it with the middle pickup because it still has the bite of the bridge but it's not the same a 
is opposite to <laughs> And I'm not playing the riff correctly because I'm just jamming it. But it's usually a thing. So just using different pickup configuration, it's a great way of getting different tones from your guitar without getting any different pedal, without plugging into nothing different. So I, I uh, play a lot like if I have a soft, re a soft drive. <coughs> Okay, I have a soft drive here, let me turn the reverb on. This is my main tone. rhythm tone. When I go to solo, I move up to the neck pickup or to the bridge pickup, depending on how loud I can get, but check out the difference. Instead of... Or if I go to the bridge... So it immediately cuts more through the mix. And this is more noticeable with the amp louder. I'm playing at home, it's 11 p.m. So I'm playing quiet, as quiet as possible. And I'm playing really, so the, that's why playing loud is so great because you have a lot of nuances. Here, I'm almost at the maximum, whether I'm playing harder or softer. But you get the point. So it's, it's a great solution just using the pickup configuration. And, in my guitar, in my nags, and in a lot of my guitars, I I have the um, the bland knob here. Double guitar once by accident. <laughs> How do you take that double guitar at a studio to the live stage? I don't. That's the thing. When you are in the studio, you have no faces, no no lights, no drinking, no people nothing it's a very different perspective of seeing and watching a live show so in the studio you miss a lot of stuff like looking at the guitar player's face uh, and and uh, it, it's very different to play live and to play in the studio so in the studio it always feels like a smaller version of the band especially because in when you are watching a band performing live, whether it's in a club or in a big venue, you have a huge wall of sound coming from the stage, either from the back line or from the PA system. When you're listening to a CD, you are listening to earbuds, which are this small, or to some hi-fi speakers, which are this small or this small, but never huge. So you miss a lot of things when you're listening to the record. So you need to make it a little more interesting. And a lot of bands like ACDC, for example, they overdub, they play, Angus plays a part, Malcolm plays another, so they, they double work together and they make the arrangement to play like that. But I was telling you, I have the blend control in this guitar is a push-push, so I push it down or push it down. When I push it down in the neck position or in the bridge position, I have both the neck and bridge so I have another sound which is different than just the neck it's the James, the James Brown This guitar, I also have an out of phase push pull. So even when I push the second tone, it makes the bridge be out of phase. So I have the Albert Collins out of phase. Mm -hmm. 
I need some overdrive to make it sound good. Push it in phase. Okay, so I even have more tones, and this is simple. These are simple mods, not very hard to do. But I'm not even going there. Not even going to the modding on your guitar. Just the pickup configuration. It's a great way of having different tones. Second tip is adjusting the pickup height. So the higher the pickup is, the hotter it is the more mid-range it gets, the more compressed it gets. The lower the pickup, the more softer the, the, and the more acoustic it gets. So you hear more of the guitar. And there's a balance. You cannot lower it too. If, you, if it's too low, since the pickup is a magnetic field, creating a magnetic field, if you get it too low, you lose strength and then the guitar doesn't... it gets dead. But there's a huge a huge range of possibilities for you to to play i like to have the neck pickup really down it makes it sound like an acoustic guitar it gives it a little more brightness a little more um bell like sounding acoustic guitar sounding <laughs> You can balance the pickups because usually when the guitars come from the factory they are leveled or at least they are not at, to my taste so usually when you move to the bridge pickup it sounds thin and weak so I move the bridge pickup as high as I can and as I like so I can get the fat tone out of the bridge pickup it sounds full not as bassy as the neck, but it's supposed to, but it's it doesn't sound thin, thin and weak. Uh, Andre999 is asking what pedal I use in Batumal and Duna Carioca. I use my line 6 M13 tremolo in a very fast, it's kind of the pattern tremolo in a very, very fast setting. Another tip for you to get tones out of your guitar is the tone control. It took me a long time to use the tone control on my guitar. It's still taking me a long time. But the tone control is great. For example, when you want, like in this guitar, the neck pickup can be a little too bright. So if you tame just a little, like on a six or five in this guitar, it's tamed then but because if you use it like this on six with an overdrive it's a little too dark I like the the spankiness with an overdrive but sometimes the clean is too wimpy so the tone control is a great great friend on the bridge pickup the same thing and on my guitar I have installed a Lindy Frailin magic cap on the bridge pot on the tone pot what is a magic cap it's a, it's just a cap that you put on the tone instead of the normal 0.22 it's a very very low value that makes it not cut and not be like super dark like the neck pickup is a normal one so if I have the neck pickup fully cut it gets completely dark but the bridge pickup open, fully cut, it just tames the highs. It's very hard to, to hear it here 
with the YouTube compression and with the amp so low. It's just a rule of thumb. Just think about the concept. Don't worry about what you're listening to because it's not very clinical. But trust me, it's it's a great thing. It's like having the, the bridge pickup with the tone all the way cut down with this cap, because if it is a cap, a normal cap, it won't work like this. But having it like this, it sounds almost like a humbucker. Variation, and you don't need to use it fully from to one side or fully to the other. Uh, the other tip, and we're going to number four, it's the volume. That took me a lot of a lot to, to learn, a lot, uh, a little less than tone because tone I'm just using it. Okay, the difference in tone is coming through. Great, thank you. Uh, um, I took the effort, so usually every Wednesday I run a jam session here at my hometown uh, at this moment. <laughs> uh, I'm just not, it's just not happening due to the COVID thing. But I usually run a jam session and I forced myself to use only guitar, cable and amp or a pedal that I leave on all the time like a like the Janis, for example, or the Russ effects double drive, double standard, which is a distortion, or the Zvex box of rock, the um, full tone catalyst. So, one of those pedals that you can leave always on the Rat, the Rattler from Jam Pedals is also a great one. One of those pedals that you can leave on all the time, and then you just use the volume. Like if you like the amp was overdriving, or I just overdrive the amp and not touch it and use only volume and, and pick up switching. And I forced myself to do that just to practice playing guitar and amp because I always been a pedal guy. I've always been like, I have everything full on and then I need more, I, I turn in another pedal. And I was really into playing like that, playing like more dynamic. My guitar is, uh, treble bleed on, on the volume pot and treble bleed is actually a thing that you put on um, resistance in a condenser that you put on your volume pot and it allows you to not lose high not lose high end that's the only thing so if I use for example my Janis Mies Nekis, which is one of my favorite overdrives at the moment if I use it very overdriven <laughs> like this I can now use my volume as my gain control so I can lower it to two or three and I have my clean tone so I get my volume on four neck pickup if I use the, the volume on 10, it's overdriven. But if I clean it up to 4, it's little wing clean. volume pot being used like this is that you have a lot of worlds in between four or two or whatever and ten five and a half seven 
so used to play like this that I really got into pedals that really work great with the guitar's volume because it, it's not all pedals that work this way so this is always now a thing that I can choose a pedal it's like if I'm in the size in between two overdrive pedals or two fuzz pedals I go for the one that really responds to my volume because it's so crucial and even on on 10 guitar on 10 bridge pickup well let me turn the clean tone turning the guitar volume like on nine or eight and a half it's like the minimum adjustment it depends on the guitar, it depends on the pot, it depends on the volume. For me, it's really hard to listen at, at this volume, as I said. But usually just moving back the pot a little, there's a, a spot where it cuts a little of the highs, a little of the... Um, a little of the um, trebliness, so it makes it less bright, but just in a smidge. It almost doesn't change the tone, but it allows you to play like with the pick. So for example, when I play in Trio Pagu with my casino, with my Epiphone casino, I usually play with my fingers, so I have the, the volume full on. When I want to play some melody with my pick, I just back a little of the, of the volume and it takes off the, that shrillness that the pick will give me and it's, it's, it stops being aggressive and it's kind of taming the tone but without going to the tone part, it's going to the volume. It's a great thing. And it's a great thing in guitars like uh, Les Paul's 335s or my Epiphone Sheraton or the Casino. Every guitar that has two volumes, two separate volumes for the neck of the bridge pickup, you can put the guitar in the middle and then just, for example, it's the Clapton tone. It's putting the guitar in the middle and just taking off just, just a little of the bridge pickup. It gives you like a dark muffled tone, but with clear, it's, it's clear and, and muffled at the same time, which is very strange, but it's that Clapton sound, that 335 sound. BB King used it a lot, like in the middle position and played with the volume. So it's the volume control on your guitar is such an effective thing. But what, never, what no one told me, and I wish they had told me, is that it, it works great when you have the amp compressing and when you have drive on the amp, because if you have a clean tone, well, the volume will, will work, but it's, it's not even close to what you can get with a very distorted sound. So I usually set my amp or my pedal being the amp, because sometimes I use a pedal so I can play with a quiet amp, I can play at a quiet volume, but I have a distortion, because in order for me to distort or to overdrive the Blues Junior, I need it to be a little louder. Or to overdrive the Deluxe Reverb Tone Master, I need it to be a little louder. So if I use the pedal, I'm distorting within the pedal, not in the amp. So it's the pedal that is compressing and distorting. And then I set the most distortion I want out of my tone. So my maximum sound is 10 on the guitar. And I sometimes I play all evening at five or seven it depends on where what i what i want to play but i know i have that available but i might not even use it and that's the power of the of the tone control of the volume control i'm sorry let me just check in the comments excuse me for looking down but <laughs> i'm filming with my iphone so the comments don't show up over there and i'm using the iphone because the camera is way better than the the ipad's camera uh, Paul is losing highs when you dial back the volume sometimes that people might want. Can anyone suggest a reason why you might want that? I ask because the treble bleed always seems like 
an addition or mod. Yeah, there's a there's a one thing that a treble bleed is not great. When you play with fuzz pedals, they already do that treble bleed thing. So I have the broadcast here, which is kind of a fuzz. It's not a fuzz, but I can e explain it. <laughs> Sometimes it gets too bright. You need it. It would be great if you could use the non treble bleed. I'm building a new guitar here in Portugal. Well, I'm not building, I ordered it for, from Futon Guitars. And we have installed in, in the volume pot two treble bleeds because there's different values you can use and one without treble bleed. So I have like a, a three way switch over here that I can choose if I want treble bleed A or treble bleed B or no treble bleed exactly because of that but 99% of the time I want the treble bleed because I want to have a clean tone and be able to make it quieter and not get like usually you get like this you lower the, the volume and you get and I don't get I don't want to lose highs the perfect situation for me because the treble bleed, I think it kind of lets more of the high end than when you are well, with a normal volume. But the perfect situation for me would, would be like a natural, just making it quieter. But it's very hard to find that value. It's just a matter of experiment. My volume pot knob goes to 11 for exactly that reason, when you just need to push over the edge. Yeah, that's why Clapton uses a mid, a mid boost. Okay. Another tip for you, I, I told you I would be giving you 10 tips because today is 10, June 10, so 10 tips, uh, and 10 is a good number. 10 tips for you to get tones out of your guitar with no money, not spending a dime. A great, great thing is where you play with your right hand. So if I'm in the neck pickup, can almost make it sound like a jazz box if I turn the tone to six or that value where I take off the brightness of the guitar. But it still sounds like a single coil. But if I play on top of the neck pickup or a little more into the, the neck, so listen, middle, which is my normal position. loses the mid-range. BB King picked a lot on top of the neck pickup and that's a really really in interesting characteristic of BB King's tone. It works more towards the BB King tone if you have a P90 or a humbucker guitar because it sounds more, it, it accentuates that. But you, you hear it when I play like... <laughs> almost two different guitars like and I didn't even change pickup <laughs> I, I changed nothing so this is a simple free way of getting different tones play with it you know the closest you play to the bridge the brighter and honkier it gets in the middle it's the it's a balanced tone Closer to the neck or to the fretboard, mm. it will give you a hollow tone, more bassy, less mid rangey So you can attack that way. Let me just check the comments because there's a lot of comments coming in. So yeah, always have to turn down the tone when using a fuzz. 
says Paul. And Pablo, a ball treble booster. No, no, it's not. It's nothing like a treble bleed. So the treble bleed, whenever you move a normal pot down, it cuts. Firstly, it cuts a treble more than the rest of the sound. So a treble bleed kind of uh, regains you that. So let's more treble pass through. That's that's what it does. A treble booster boosts the treble and cuts the bass. So it's a different thing, and it, and it is a booster, not a cutter. But uh, yeah, it's. I, I hope I, I explain myself. Paul, my guess that uh, taking the volume down removes the distortion harmonics, and not necessarily the high tones coming on the guitar. So bleeding the high end from the guitar would not kill them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it applies. Distortion, fuzz, overdrive. So the thing is, distortion, overdrive, fuzz is compression. So it makes the lower, the quiet notes louder and the louder notes quieter. So it compresses, it's, it smashes your guitar tone. So if you ever record a, a waveform of your, of your playing, you will see a distorted tone is more like a square wave and a clean tone is more like a spiky wave, like you have ups and downs. While on the fuzz, for example, it's kind of flat. It's a square, a rectangle. When you move down the volume, you are actually cutting gain. It's, it's exactly like that. It's exactly like lowering the gain on your distortion or overdrive or fuzz. So you're getting cleaner and you have it here in really close to your hand so you can have all that interaction another great way is to use a volume pedal for that because then you're free your hands are free and you can keep on using it that's why larry carlton and uh for example uh i forget the name of one of my favorite guitar players mark knopfler uses it a lot the volume pedal to to swell like to do the <coughs> Stuff like this. A lot of comments. Uh, Abu, to love your channel. I have an, an Electro Harmonics Big Muff. That sounds great. Do, a valve solid state amp. Through a valve solid state amp. But not great through a digital amp. Yeah. As it loses the definition. Any thoughts? Yeah, fuzz pedals are very finicky with amps, guitars, cables, amp pedals that come before them, after them, so it's normal that it happens. A digital amp is usually not compressing the same way as a valve amp or a tube amp is, so you're losing it. A fuzz pedal sounds different with every uh, everything you change in, this, in, the, in the signal chain, even the venue. Sometimes a fuzz pedal sounds terrible in, in this certain venue and great in another that's the thing about fuzz pedals it's very hard to control them that's why they are so coveted uh, don't play a treble booster into a clean amp though yeah <laughs> that's a good advice especially a twin reverb it will kill you uh, Yeah, that's it. Treble boosters sound great into a little overdriven amp or to boost the tone a little. Well, let me give you another tip because we're, we're coming close to the end and I'm, I, st I still have a lot of tips. Playing with your fingers is another tip. So playing with your fingers will give you, first, if you're playing with a piece of plastic, and I'm, I'm not talking about pick, uh, using different picks because this would involve spending money. Although it's very small amount of money, it will involve. But of course, different picks sound different and make you feel different. But playing with your fingers, it's for free because they come with you when you, when you are born, has different approaches. So you can play with your fingers, it will be warmer than a pick because a pick is plastic. So if I hit the pick, hit my guitar with a pick, 
You hear this tone? You don't hear this tone. That's exactly what the guitar hears. So if I, if I, this will sound different than this, right? So you lose this, this sharp that you hear with a pick. You lose that when you play with your fingers. It's a warmer sound. So if I play... If I play with a pick. So I use the pick and the fingers, I go uh, in between both. When I don't play with the pick, I have the pick like this and I move it here. Okay, then it's really easy to use it and I can play with all my fingers. When you play with your fingers, you have two options, or at least two options. So you're playing with your fingers. Firstly, you can play notes at once, like you can play... Okay, like a piano. As opposite to... This will always be... You will always have different sounds happening at different times. While if you play it with your fingers can play them all at the same time. So if you're playing bossa nova, cannot play this with a pick, it won't sound the same. But you also have with the fingers, you also have the Albert King approach, which is popping and slapping. Let me turn on the gain, turn a little down the gain of the pedal. And if I use the out of phase, it will get even better. the strings which is very different from so you get a different tone because you get the brightness of the string hitting the frets and coming up so it's okay using the fingers fingers are great for playing like stuff like Set of. So I usually use the pick and the fingers as I use the in-between settings on a strat. When I want it smoother, I use the in-between or I use my fingers. And when I want it sharper, more attacky, I use the pick or I use the individual pickup or I combine both. So I can play like smoother in-between setting. Fingers. I want it more snappy. Even more. Okay. And another tip, pick position. <laughs> I will I almost forgot this. It's very different to play the pick with a tip 
or with a side. The side will sound rounder, it's easier, it's faster. <laughs> It almost will give you the jazz, jazz three pickup, like the, the small pickup, the uh, picks, and it's faster, warmer. The tip is is brighter. Because actually, the tip has a lot more material to bend, so it's it's lighter. It feels lighter. The side is thick. The guy from Antrax plays very thin picks, but with the side, which makes them feel way heavier. So I'm playing a 96 millimeters pick here. And at the side, it almost feels like a two millimeters or at least a 114 uh, with the tip. So it's two sounds in one pick without spending any money. As I promised. Let me just check on the comments. <laughs> Josh Homie once said he found out that picks existed way after he learned to play the guitar. Nowadays he doesn't even use picks at home. Yeah. You, you, you can play without pick. And sound very aggressive, no problem at all. Uh, don't play a drill, okay. I, I really, the picks I'm using is this ones. I, I, I'm probably doing an episode about picks because they are so relevant and we are geek enough. I did a, <laughs> an episode about guitar cables, so I think picks is a great solution and I have a lot of great picks. I have a wallet of picks that I always carry with me because I can use, pick and choose whatever I want. Now, my favorite ones are this Delrin Dunlop, which is the Delrin 500. Uh, I'm not sure if, you, if it will fix out, but it's Delrin, D-E-L-R-I-N, 500 and then I use I have all the, the thicknesses. I use a lot the two millimeters But it tires me too much and it, it doesn't have the funk stuff. It's very hard to play the Now I'm using the 96 and I'm liking it. I use the 114 I also used for Dona Carioca. I use the thinner one the 70 something It depends on what you what you want Yeah, I always, I also use it. I have my wife's polish, uh, sand polish. So I, whenever the pick is getting a little like this, this teeth here, which really irritates me, I use his, her nail. It's, it's a square thing with a very thin sandy, it's not sandpaper, it's sand rubber or whatever. And I just give it a, a rub and it's perfect. It's like new again and it doesn't wear out the pick which is great because I used sandpaper but it was too too hard for the pick and it sanded it out and make it point here that's a, a great advantage of using the side parts of the pick because you all you have two picks in one pick when you when you get this part used you get the other and it's a great thing okay let me get you to next next tip Playing dynamics, okay. Playing dynamics. It's a, a huge thing. If you play hard or soft, it will change your tone drastically. So if I play something like with an overdrive. Using all the things like Playing with the pick, no pick, fingers. I use the fingers a lot to smooth out my playing.
finding all the things, backing the volume down, picking harder, picking slowly, picking hard with the volume down, which makes a different tone. So dynamic is a very, very, very important thing on your playing and on your tone, and it's a free tone tool. Next tip on my iPad. Yes, because I prepare for this lives. I have wrote it down like, I need 10 tips. Let me see if I can get 10 tips for, for my fellows here on YouTube. And I think I will give you 11. String gauge. String gauge is crucial to playing. Uh, when, I, when I started playing, I thought the bigger the string gauge, the best tone and the better player I would be because Stevie Ray Vaughan used it 13 and everyone knows bigger strings make best tone. Everyone says that. It's not true. The string gauge is very personal. It depends on what you're looking for. It depends on your taste. It depends on the feel. I had tendinitis on my left hand, so I had to back down string gauge. I was using tens, and I backed down to nines. And I loved the tone of nines. I really, really loved. I didn't have that tone since I played my Joe Satriani Ibanez, my G JS 1000 BTB, that had nines because it had a Floyd Rose, and nines would, was what everyone used in the 90s after uh, before everyone says said that Stevie Ray was the king and in, you had to play very thick strings to sound like a man I love the feeling of the nines I really really loved it because they sound compressed they are soft they are slinky they are very pleasing to play it happens in this guitar I prefer tens because nines are too slinky and when i'm playing live if i'm playing home nines are perfect when i'm playing live i'm digging in i'm energized i'm very excited i'm playing harder so the soft strings that don't respond to my picking attack so i use tens because i play live but for example on my on my tellies i use nines i don't like tens on my gnl s500 i use nines I don't, I can't use tens on the GNL. It's too hard, that guitar. So now I play what I feel I like, and I don't care if people say string, fatter strings are better. One of my greatest idols, Billy Gibbons, uses seven, <laughs> sevens on his guitar, so very thin strings. BB King used eights. Jimmy Page used nines, and it changed the 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 high e for a banjo string to get like a eight uh, string set hendrix used a very low a very thin string set so i don't really care what people say i just care what i like and what what feels better better to me if you like playing 11s or 13s great just go with you, with what you what you feel but string gauges really make a difference in tone they make a difference, not for the best, not for the better or for the worst, but in, they make a difference. Let me check on the comments. Leonardo Pereira, surely the best way to give interpretation to our playing is just mess around with the picking strength on the strings. Yeah, it's like it's like talking. If you talk the same, like. If you talk like this it's very monotonous it, there, there's no expression on this it's very boring if you talk always in the same tone but if you give some accentuation some something that really really inspires you you get people's attention it's playing is like talking you have to be interesting in order to have a conversation or in order to have to play to keep on playing uh, tens adding resistance feels good to have some pushback on my fingers. Yeah, that's that's why I use tens on this. Uh, Francis Rossi used nines, and Rick Perfect you used thirteens. Yeah, that's it. 
Uh, thank you, Sid. Um, for example, if I use heavier strings, I use heavier picks, thicker picks. So if I use tens, I use the, the 96 or the 114. If I use nines, I use the, the, low, the 96 or the 70 something. Pablo Ramirez, gauge depends also on the guitar. Yeah, that's exactly. That's exactly. It depends on the guitar, depends on your feelings, depends on your setup, depends on how you play it, on what you want to play. For example, in Tripagu, I use 13s or 12s, flat mount, because I'm playing bossa nova and I need the strings to push back. Otherwise, I, I play a lot of notes like. Strings are too slinky, they are not back in place when I want them, when I want to play them again. So it depends a lot. It depends on what you're playing and what you want it. On the Epi Sheraton I use tens, I think, or elevens. I, I'm not sure. Uh, let me give you another tip because we are way past time. It should be one hour and I'm way past time. It's 62 minutes now. Flat mount strings, that would be another suggestion. Although this implies that you buy a flat mount strings, but flat mount strings have a thing in their tone. I'm, I'm really anxious to test one of my single coil guitars with flat mount strings. I use it a lot on my jazz guitars. I use it on my uh, Casino, on my Sheraton, on my George Benson, on my Framus Mayfield. I'm now using... Uh, Tomastic swing, which are in between flat mounds and round mounds, and I like it a lot. But I would like to test real flat mounds on on a, on a strat or, yeah, probably on a strat, or I'll probably use it on my Dan Electro, the orange one, the '59 orange, because it's since Dona Carioca is not playing, the guitar is, is sitting there, and it's a bright guitar, so I think flat mounds would give it a really cool thing and the last tip which I already talked about is popping and slapping so playing very different than right so tone when people say tone is in your fingers is this they mean is the all you put into into the guitar it's not just in the fingers otherwise my fingers are here and I don't have any tone so it's in the combination of my fingers my feeling my soulfulness my instrument this is a an incredible, incredible guitar. It's the best guitar I own. It's the guitar I love the most. It plays unbelievably. It reacts to everything I put in it. For it to be better, you need to have a tremolo, but I don't think, I have another one with a tremolo, but they sound different. But the other with the tremolo is maple fretboard. So I'm not sure if that's where the difference is or if it is the tremolo that's not getting the mess I want from the guitar. They sound different, very close, but different. But this feels like, this feels like home. This is my jeans and t-shirt guitar. It's just magical, magical, magical. So it's not just the fingers because I don't play the same with this guitar or, or with my Tele or with my PRS DGT or with that acoustic nylon guitar. They all sound different and they all have a thing to, to add to, to your tone. Well, my friends, thank you so much for being here with me. It's a pleasure. I'm thinking of con continuing to do this live shows at Wednesday. Tell me if this, let me know if this is a, a good schedule for you. I was also, also thinking about 3 p.m., Sunday 3 p.m., because 3 p.m. is... Uh, 
on the U.S. is like 10 a.m. or 9 a.m., depending on where you are in the U.S. 3 p.m. in Portugal, it's a cool hour. And, and in Europe, please let me know if, if it would be preferable for you, 3 p.m. on a Sunday or 11 p.m. on a Wednesday. I can't do 11 p.m. on a Wednesday forever because jam sessions are, I hope, coming back soon. So I will be playing at this time. So please let me know. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. This will be available on the YouTube channel. If you haven't done it yet, please subscribe it. Give the thumbs up if you like it. If you want to have some guitar lessons with me, I'm still available. I have a few places for, for guitar lessons. And uh, I'm available, so please send me a message or at, to buddha at drguitar.net or on Instagram or Facebook or whatever you prefer. Just a final question. Um, oh no, it's not a final question. P9 is using it. Uh, yes, or, uh, you know. It's not for me. It's a conversation between Pablo Ramirez and then Ernest Larkin. Uh, my my Sheraton, I have an episode on the Sheraton if you want to look it closer, but I have Pure Path, Lindy Fralin. I really love Lindy Fralin pickups and work and he's a great guy really knowledgeable and is still a small business I really really like to work with his pickups so thank you so much we'll see each other on Saturday yeah Saturday there's a new episode coming about musical theory basic musical theory for guitar players hope you enjoy it I hope you subscribe it bye bye stay safe